off and then we will get into the presentation, okay? Um, just to let everyone know, we are recording this event. Um, for those who are at work, you know, we're nurses as well, so we understand some people are 7P, things like that, we're sleeping. Totally okay, we're gonna email this out. So even if you miss something or if your something goes out, we will definitely email it to you um, in the next couple of days, okay? So don't fret, we got you guys. Um, a couple of other, other things, if you look to your right-hand side, you'll see a, a general chat where a lot of everybody is kind of saying where they're from, which is so great. Um, you can also add other members if you if you know you have a um, if you want to say hey to anyone else you can also um, add them. You can also directly message anyone. Feel free to direct, directly message me if you're having like audio trouble or anything like that. I will help you troubleshoot. Okay. And speaking of troubleshooting, a lot of people will have. Um, sometimes do have trouble with audio or visuals. And what we suggest is one, closing out all of your browsers and using Google Chrome, as well as um, if you can, test the audio and the visual um, outside of the RSVP and then come back into the event. That usually can kind of troubleshoot those things. And if none of those work, like I said, you can just directly DM me or there's also a help button at the top right hand corner, okay? There's also the Q&A section, which I know everyone is here for. So um, if you'll just uh, throw those questions in there, I'm going to float those to Ari at two times during the presentation, halfway through and then at the end. I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you guys, we are not gonna get to all your questions because it is a lot of you guys in here. Um, she is she is jam packed this presentation with a lot of information already. Um, but if, in the Q&A section, if you see someone has already written the same question, you can just upvote it and we'll make sure that we get to that one specifically, especially if there's a lot of upvotes, okay? Um, but don't worry if and when we do not get to all your questions, please feel free to email us. And then also at the end of the presentation, when we um, send the, um, the video out, we're also gonna send a feedback um, questionnaire for you. So if you could just do us a huge, 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 huge solid and fill that out and tell us what you wanna know or how we can make other events better. And you never know, maybe we can have a part two with Ari if we don't get to your questions. So again, we thank you so much for coming and we'll get right into it. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited. Um, we've been working pretty hard on this, so I'm excited that everyone is here. Like, this is crazy. There's so many people. I know aesthetics is like the one, I feel like it's like a specialty that everyone wants to know about. And I always say this when I got into aesthetics, I wish that I, this sounds kind of weird, but like, I wish that I had a me because there was no one to like lead me. I just kind of figured everything out on my own. And I, I guess you could say I got lucky, blessed, whatever you want to say. And I feel like collaboration over competition is, you know, I just, I'm just a true believer of that. And so that's why I kind of share the ins and outs of like how I got into aesthetic nursing. Um, I answer a lot of questions. I used to do um, on Instagram, I just used to do like the question box and I would have everyone you know, just like put in questions. And I felt like that was just so not personal with people. And then I would get messages. And so eventually, you know, I was like, I would love to do the virtual side of it. And I feel like this is just way easier. I get to like talk to you guys, you guys get to ask me questions. And I feel like you get a little bit more out of it when I'm like talking, rather than me like sending a message, you know, it's like, you can misinterpret like anything through texts and messages now. So it's just a little bit better to speak to you guys um, virtually and I really love it. So, okay, so yes, this is our agenda. Um, go back really quick, Fred, I just wanna see. Intro, start, okay, cool, perfect. All right, so yeah, let's, um, I kinda introduced myself, but just to give you guys like a little background, um, Nursing was my second bachelor's. Um, so my first degree was pre-med, decided I didn't want to be a doctor. That's a lot of work. Um, by the way, I'm actually interested, like kind of as I'm saying this, are there is there anyone who's like not a nurse or a nursing student that's in this? I'm just kind of interested. Um, but anyways, I got my pre-med degree, my first bachelor's, and decided I did not want to be a doctor. And so I went right back into um, an accelerated program. I actually went to Chamberlain. So if there's any Chamberlain alumni, what's up? Hey guys. 
Um, yeah, and I'm from Atlanta, or I'm from Marietta. If you're from Atlanta, you'd be like, you're not from Atlanta, but I'm from Marietta, Georgia. Um, and so, yeah, so I ended up going to Chamberlain. I worked for two years um, doing cardiothoracic surgery at Piedmont Atlanta Hospital. Loved it, uh, but just was like ready to move on. So I went to do travel nursing because I feel like that's what everyone does. And I came to LA. I came to LA with like the hopes of like, I'm gonna do travel nursing and I'm gonna go to all these different states. I literally came to LA and stayed. And when I first started nursing, I used to say all the time, I'm like, I wanna do Botox. And, but that was like all I knew about aesthetics. I literally knew nothing else about aesthetics. I just knew I wanted to do Botox. I had no idea even like what Botox was. Um, so I think that's kind of funny. And once I got here, I obviously started doing travel nursing. I know one of the questions I get a lot is like, you know, how do you do or can you do both? And long, long answer in short way is yes. Um, but anyways, did travel nursing, got into aesthetics and went back one more time for my nurse practitioner. And now I'm here. So that's kind of my work experience, my aesthetic training. Like I, I got super lucky. So I actually um, interviewed for jobs and the job that I ended up getting the first time was a nurse practitioner. She, you guys should follow her. It's um, Aesthetics by Tabitha. She, her name is Tabitha Carnivali. She's been in aesthetics for almost ooh, like 16 years now. And she actually helped start, if you guys are in LA, you would know, um, sorry, I'm kind of missing the I just scroll down on the on the general questions. Um, she started off at she started off as a family nurse practitioner and then started with Laser Away, and she actually helped them branch out and make this huge expansion of a business. They're huge. Laser Away is like everywhere in LA. So she started off working there. Um, she went into like a private practice and then grew and became too big. So then she was looking for a nurse and she brought me on. And that is literally how I learned everything. Um, on the next slide, I don't go yet, but on the next slide, I'm going to kind of explain like how that kind of worked out. Um, and then I know just like with aesthetic nursing, branding is obviously really big because if you don't know, um, it's really all about like a hustle in aesthetic nursing. Nobody really knows who you are. Nobody really wants you to inject them. You're brand new. I mean, think about like when you're a brand new nurse or you're a nursing student, when you go into the hospital, nobody wants you to like touch them, right? So it's very much the same thing. Um, and branding, branding is very, very, very hard. However, it's obviously doable and I don't think I would be where I am today without branding. Um, I got super lucky with Tabitha because like I said, she's actually like a very close friend. She's a little bit older than me. So she kind of is like mom age, but like cool aunt age um, or like older sister. So it's really nice. Um, and when I came in, she gave me the opportunity. She said, I don't care if you want to brand yourself um, because a lot of places you go, if you work, at an office, they won't allow you to brand yourself, or if you leave them and you post Instagram for them, you have to remove it um, when you leave. So that's like kind of a big thing. And so I was super lucky that she allowed me to have all those opportunities to kind of grow with her. Um, is there a slideshow? Oh, somebody said they don't see the slideshow. Covered, Katie. More. Okay. Um, okay, let's go to the next one. So this is like the number one question I literally, I mean like, guys, I've probably had thousands of DMs on this one. And the most frustrating part about the certifications in education is that it's very vague. So for one, as we know, like scope of practice is really weird in all different states. Um, so it does depend on where you live. In some states, RNs are able to inject. Some states, RNs are not able to inject. Um, some states, only mid-levels and higher are able to inject. Um, in some states, estheticians can operate lasers, whereas in like California, only RNs and higher can operate lasers. 
Some estheticians can't even microneedle, where in some states, some estheticians can microneedle because of the depth of the skin and it's considered like an invasive um, treatment. So it is a little iffy. Yes, um, it is a little bit iffy because it very much is all state dependent. However, there is technically no specific education or requirement besides what your state requires for that scope of practice. So for instance, when I first got into aesthetics, um, sorry, I'm just making sure everybody can kind of hear. Um, everyone can hear me, right? Just like maybe a few people say yes, yes, yes. Okay, great, thank you. Um, when I, perfect, thank you guys. <laughs> I know some can't, so I just wanna make sure that you know most people can hear. Um, so when I first got into aesthetics, like I said, Tabitha, she was incredible. She one-on-one -on -one trained me in absolutely everything I did. So it was very much like nursing school, which was, it's very much her because she's like a very type A person, but very sweet and chill and just wants you to learn and get the best out of whatever she's teaching you. And um, she actually would set up checkoffs, just like nursing school. So the first thing I learned was lasers and we would bring in models. It was usually like some of her friends or I could bring in some of my friends and we would give them a free treatment. Um, she would, let's say we're gonna like laser underarms, she would laser one side and then I would laser the other side and I would have to check off like 10 patients. And then once I was checked off on one skill, I was on to the next skill. So same with Botox, same with fillers, same with pretty much every treatment I did, microneedling, cool sculpting, all of that. Um, however, in addition to that, Tabitha did bring in, so let's say um, with Botox, right? Botox is a product that is owned by a brand and that brand is called Allergan. So when you buy products or whoever your provider is in the office that handles that, when they buy products, they should technically give you a teaching on that product. So Tabitha brought in or reached out to Allergan to have them bring in people to train me specifically on their products. Mind you, she had already trained me herself, which is just fine. It's 100% good, that's more than enough, that's technically all you need is somebody who knows what they're doing to train you. Um, or if you know somebody that works for Allergan and you can get in on a training at an office that they're doing it, that is enough. Um, obviously, I personally don't think that's enough to just get a one day training and just start injecting patients. You know, it's definitely practice, it's definitely, uh, getting comfortable, the way you hold a needle, the way you talk to your patients, the way you kind of have to comfort them. It's not very comfortable, especially like with fillers. Um, so there are other things that go into injecting that take time. So it's not necessarily a one day training. However, you can get the one day training and that's honestly really good when you want to start applying for jobs, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, so like I said, even though there's no specific certification or requirement or education besides whatever scope of practice you need to have in order, in order to inject or use um, a machine or anything like that, there is a certification. It's called CANS. Um, it's a Certified Aesthetic Nurse Specialist. Um, you can get that, and that looks really nice if you were to go somewhere and try to apply for a job. Um, Nancy, I will come back to your question because I vaguely feel like I might look at it a little bit later about the MD um, and buying product. I know you're asking like as I'm talking about it. Um, but cans is something that you can get. It's very optional, to be totally honest. I don't have my cans. It's something that I can get. I don't need. It just looks, it's, you know, us nurses like to have letters after our name. It's just something that we really love. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> but it's letters after your name. It's not anything you actually need to inject. And if you get CAN certified, um, it does look nice as a new injector if you go somewhere and apply. And you're like, well, I had a class or I was able to get a little bit of training and then I got CAN certified. Um, so that does, that does look nice. Um, so yeah, so the no training, it is just kind of what it is. I know that sounds so bad. I know that you feel like 
you're getting nowhere with that. But I am going to talk a little bit later on some strategies and ways to find training um, on your own. So let's go to the next slide. Um, okay, so this one's actually one of my like favorite slides because preparing for the interview was one thing that I felt like sold me when I was looking for jobs. So the way I actually started to look for jobs is I was on a travel assignment and I got canceled. Well, the census was really low. This was obviously when I first moved to California and uh, the census was really low. I kept getting canceled and I'm like, you know what, if I'm going to keep getting canceled, I'm just going to make a brand new resume and I'm literally going to apply to any aesthetic job I can find. And that's literally what I did, guys. So I made a brand new resume. Um, I made it really, really pretty. I just I put color in it because this is actually the industry you can do that. Like you can put color on things. You can bedazzle stuff. You can make it sparkle like this is the industry. It's all about selling. It's all about beauty. It's all about pretty things. Um, so yeah, that is what I did. I took off that, or I didn't take off that day. I got canceled and I wasn't getting paid. So I felt like maybe I as well invest in myself. Um, and I made a brand new resume and I literally got on indeed.com. I'd imagine you could probably go on any like job engine. Uh, isn't jobs.com one or something like that? I'm not sure. Uh, I just chose indeed. I think that was like the only one I knew at the time. And I applied to every single position that said anything about aesthetic nursing. Um, every single one of them required years of experience. Obviously, I didn't have that. I didn't really care. Those search engines are going to weed you out anyways. So I was like, whatever. If it doesn't weed me out, great. Then they'll see it. If it does, it, you know, it's no love loss. Um, so I literally sent my resume. And honestly, the search engines are really annoying because you'll upload your resume. And then it basically asks you to like put everything in the like drop boxes of it another resume and I think that's where you get weeded out but um, I actually ended up getting a call from every single office that I applied to or let me not say every single office I probably applied to like 20 jobs and I probably got like a reach back from like 17 places obviously I didn't take them all like you know some would reach out to me and then ask like do you have experience and i would say no and they would say okay well unfortunately we are looking for someone with experience however i went on multiple interviews and every interview that did that was okay with me not having experience was actually willing to train me because they knew from the beginning that you know i'm sorry i don't have experience but i'm willing to learn and i think that like having that willing to learn anything not being afraid to stick a needle in somebody's face which sounds crazy um was like one of the the bigger things that kind of got me through the interview and got me the job at every single place that i um, did interview at so before i went into the interview like i said when i started nursing i'm like i just want to do both dogs it's like I didn't know anything about Botox and I really honestly didn't know much about Botox fillers, anything before I went into my interviews. I kind of like researched a little bit of the sex. I just knew sex was what I wanted to do and I'm thankful I knew that. It is my passion. It's what I love. However, I wish I did have a little bit more basic knowledge on when I went into my interviews because they kind of taught me things while I was in the interview, which is backwards. Um, so just have a basic knowledge of like what Botox says, what fillers do, um, kind of brands, what cool sculpting is, radio frequency, threads, just the basic, uh, you don't really need to know like skincare because I think that's kind of silly. Skincare is totally, or aesthetics is totally different from dermatology. Um, aesthetics is more like the injectable side and dermatology includes all of that, but is definitely more like medical. Um, so don't feel like you need to know so much about skin and lasers and things like that. Lasers will definitely be something they teach you, but just know the basic knowledge of what you're going to be doing when you go there. So obviously look up their menu of services, you know, try to see what they offer and then try to learn. Honestly, lots of menu of services at offices will kind of tell you what treatments are. And I feel like if you read that and know that, that's like more than enough. Um, personality. So like I said, this is the industry. It's about selling. It's not about necessarily like your nursing 
bedside manner like it is, but you're also selling because this is a money driven industry. Um, so yes, you do have to have that bedside nursing. I do tell everyone. Um, I personally think it's a little bit better to get a year of experience in the hospital. I think you get used to sticking people. I think you get used to um, talking to people. I just think you get comfortable in whatever setting you choose to do medically. But um, you really want to turn on that personality. Uh, when I went in, you know, bright eyed, bubbly, outward appearance, I wore my top of the line outfits. I'm not saying you have to have, I'm just going to tell you what I wore. Uh, you obviously don't have to have any of this. You know, there's so many dupes or influencers or fashion bloggers. Like you could basically look top of the nines and dress off of Amazon. Like that's, it's crazy to me now. Um, but when I went in, I wore, you know, very, very nice business clothes. I had on my red bottoms. I took my Louis bag. This is something I would never take to like a regular hospital interview. I never would do that. Um, however, this is an industry. It's all about money. They want to sell money. They want to sell your appearance. They want to sell everything that they're going to see is exactly the same thing a patient is going to see. And they're either going to like what they see and want to buy and spend money at this place, or they're going to be like, uh, like, yeah, she just looks kind of okay. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to buy it from there, you know? Um, so that's very much the idea I had, and it worked. Every place I went, they complimented me on my appearance and, you know, just how I carried myself. And I think that's a big thing. You have to definitely be personable with people, talk with people, you know, show your goofy side, not your goofy side, but, you know, show that you can make jokes, laugh, because that's all a part of a sales pitch um, when you have your patients as well. Um, obviously you have to express your passion. Um, you know, when I went in, obviously I didn't know anything, but I made it very clear. I will do whatever trainings you need. I will come in extra. Um, you know, I just made myself very flexible in showing them like, you know, whatever you want, or because really you're helping me out because I'm getting the experience and the training, especially if that was something that they were offering me. Um, and just, you know, like you'll go to conferences, just going the extra mile or that you have the interest to go the extra mile. And that same thing, willing to learn and continue training, uh, that all comes in hand. I still, to this day, and like, so like COVID really screwed me over. I was so annoyed because I love going to trainings. Like I would never go to a training for like regular <laughs> nursing bedside, like sort about cotties or something like, no, absolutely not. But fillers, yes. Threads, yes. Skin, yes, I'm going. Um, so just, and I think honestly, most injectors you find or most aesthetic nurses you find are absolutely going to have that like same passion. They want to go to conferences. They want to meet people. They want to connect with each other. There's like this community, you know, and kind of, you guys all kind of like share your info and things. And so it's really cool. So I think expressing that you have that passion to continue to learn is also um, very big. I wish that I had gotten maybe one or two treatments before I went into aesthetics interviews. Um, because like I said, I, I didn't know <laughs> anything. It's like so embarrassing saying that now. I knew nothing guys. Um, besides, like I said, the few little like Google searches that I did. Um, sorry. I'll, yeah, I'll go back to some of these questions. Um, so, I would suggest like going in, getting the treatment, even if you're just going into like, let's say you can't afford a treatment, go in and like buy like a lotion, go in and buy a product from them, um, you know, just so you can have like an idea of what a med spa looks like, when, what their office looks like, what anything kind of looks like to give you an idea of how you need to prepare yourself for that interview. So I definitely think like getting treatments, if you were to get Botox, like I would definitely be more interested in hiring somebody who's like gotten treatments done than somebody who has no idea about any treatments. Thankfully, no one really asked me that question, but I think if I were interviewing somebody, I would kind of want to know, you know, like, do you do treatments yourself? Is this something that, you know, you really promote or is it something you believe in? Why do you do it? Is it to help with uh, people's confidence like how do you feel about it for yourself not to say you have to have anything done but I just think it kind of um, you know I think it kind of sets you a little apart and you're more comfortable in that setting you kind of know what you're talking about because you've had it done to yourself so okay next um, 
training. So aesthetic medical um, educator training, you can go on their website. They are, um, they're a way to get training. However, most trainings guys are very expensive. There's also lots of private trainings. Um, also very expensive. They can run anywhere between a thousand to five to ten thousand um, dollars. To be honest, exhaust all of my little tips I'm about to give you before you do that. Um, I'm going to go back and talk about this, but I as well do like my own virtual training and I've given these tips in that training as well. And a lot of those nurses have gotten jobs based off of these tips with or without training. Um, so I do put a set of medical educators training because obviously like, yes, it is a, a good training, um, but exhaust my other tips first. So one tip that I learned is most doctors now offer Botox in their office. So, and that's, they could offer it for migraines. They can offer it for many, many things now. So if you have a primary care doctor, if he offer or she, if they offer um, Botox in their office, that means that they have an allergy and rep. And that rep technically can provide them or has to provide them with a training if that doctor asks for it. So you can go to that doctor and say, hey, I'm a nurse. I'm really interested in like having a training with Botox. If you um, ever reach out to your rep or if they ever have trainings, can you let me know? I would love to come with your team and um, do a training. That's number one. Uh, I think that's kind of the easiest way because I feel like most of us have this like, some type of connection with your doctor. And I feel like being a medical provider yourself, you're able to kind of make that connection with them. And they're like, yeah, cool. I'll let you know if I ever have a training. I would love that. Um, apply for OR or surgery positions because obviously most OR and surgery plastics um have a med spa kind of connected or they have some type of collaboration with a med spa or a provider that does injectables and um, less non-invasive treatments um, so applying for those positions you'll see a lot of aesthetic nurses kind of started off that way obviously i didn't i went the non-traditional path of this and there isn't a real path for it however i took a different path um, but i think if you were to reach out to most nurses that is the path that they have probably gone um, or they applied for like those type of positions and then they kind of grew into aesthetics. Um, what else? Also, if you're in nursing school, this is a big one. I'm sure I have a lot of nursing students here. Hello. Um, apply for front office positions. Uh, I know a lot of places actually will hire nursing students like as MAs. Asked to be an MA who follows the nurse. Uh, sets up her rooms and I would say a nurse could do this too but obviously like no you can you don't need to do this side but if you're a nurse who's well this is a great gig you can work at the front office apply to be an MA um, even if I don't you would have to check with them and see like what the office is okay with or what the clinic is okay with but definitely like pulling up the Botox and setting it pulling up the units getting the uh, prepping the patient all of that and that doesn't have to be surgery. That can literally just be a med spa. Um, that is a great way to get in. And then when you're done with nursing school, you know, be like, obviously, this is what I want to do. This is my interest. And yeah, so I think those are probably like my best tips. And those have really worked on getting people trainings um, before they actually had to pay for trainings, because I think it's a little crazy for the amount that some trainings offer. And it's like a one day hands-on deal. Um, but it is a thing and I do think it is very helpful to have your hands on because if you walk into an interview and you've never touched a patient, you've never pulled, drawn up Botox, you've never seen a syringe of filler and then there's someone that has, um, even if they did do a one day training, they're probably gonna pick the person that has seen it. So, okay, next. Questions? <laughs> I feel like I just have talk, talk, talk. <laughs> All right. Um, so there's a lot of questions. I'm going to try and feed them for like uh, the content that we just went over. So if I don't get to it, it's because it's in the later portion. Later portion. Um, yeah. Uh, there are lots of expensive one day trainings available. How reputable, helpful in getting into aesthetics or just a waste of money? You can't really. To be totally honest, I would, if I were going to go to one, I would go to one that has 
like a website or one where people can actually leave valid reviews. Um, but there's a lot of them. And that's also one of the vague things about aesthetic nursing. So that's probably not the answer you really want to hear, but it's just the truth. There's a ton of them. Technically, anybody who knows how to do Botox can offer a training, you know, so. Um, would you recommend any of the virtual trainings? Virtual? Um, yeah, I don't see why not. I think virtual is good in the sense of they would give you like anatomy. They might give you like injection points. They might give you, um, you would probably actually learn a lot from the virtual trainings. However, hands-on is always better. I'm a hands-on learner. I need to touch, feel, do, you know, feel the syringe, feel the product. Um, but virtual, absolutely. If they're going to teach you the basics and the understanding and the knowledge. Yeah, I think, I think it's worth it. Do you have any recommendations for any trainings? Um, so the aesthetics medical um, educators, that one. And then I'll just go ahead and throw it out there. I'm in the process of working with Tabitha, who is in the works with a world renowned surgeon. And we are coming up with um, modules and education and virtual um, education as well and hands on trainings. Um, so I'm obviously going to say you want to learn with us. Um, it would be in Beverly Hills, but we'll also offer online modules. That'll probably be like later this year. Um, there's also courses. They're called palette courses. Um, lots of nurses go to that. However, you do have to have a supervising medical director. So you would have to go under a doctor. They usually have to sign off that you've injected so many times. So some the ones that I would recommend are a little bit more difficult to get into because I would want you to go with one that is a reputable, you know, um, training and they usually do require you to have a doctor or um, a supervising provider. Um, so there's, it's like a twofold question. Um, somebody was asking, um, in your opinion, should someone not go into this if they don't are, uh, don't wear makeup and or can you do this without social media? Uh, yeah, both. Um, there's a lot of aesthetic nurses who go in who don't wear makeup because one, their skin is bomb because they work in aesthetics. So <laughs> you don't have to wear makeup. I mean, you can just literally be naturally beautiful and take like insane care of your skin. I'm a, I'm a little lazy when it comes to my skin, hence my feel at all. <laughs> but yes, I mean, I think aesthetics is, it's not about like having to wear makeup. It's just, it's honestly about confidence and how you feel. And I definitely think you can do it without social media if you are under a team that has a very high volume office. If you're not, then you're really going to struggle because I went, when I first started, I went under, um, the office with Tabitha, she did not have a very big social media following. And I grew a lot of my patients on my own with that social media. Um, so I think social media makes it easier. But can you do it without it? Absolutely. There's a lot of aesthetic nurses that work without social media. And, you know, their office is what brings in their patients, maybe not them themselves as a brand finding their patients. So if you have no, um, no, like want or need to like brand yourself. Yes, you can totally do it. But if you do want to brand yourself and, you know, become known for like being an injector, then yeah, social media is 100% necessary. What state do you think has the highest demand for aesthetics and nursing? And do you think that aesthetics and nursing in California is oversaturated? Um, what was the first part has the highest what? Uh, need for aesthetics. Like oh. what state? Um, I think every state but California has the highest need. <laughs> California and Texas, I feel like, are pretty, and Vegas, I feel like they're pretty high in the aesthetics. Um, I think aesthetics is still, sorry, I should have brought water. It's still very taboo in the sense of a lot of people still just like, you know, think people are doing it to look fake or, you know, so. I feel like the West Coast is more on board with aesthetics, and so it's obviously going to be a little bit more popular here. 100% California is beyond oversaturated with aesthetics. However, it's the Mecca, and if you want to learn, if you if you do want to brand yourself, the West Coast, I would say, is a better place to take your to do your trainings because all the top injectors 
you know, come to California to do trainings. All the top surgeons come here to do training. So if you want to do conferences, if you want to, you know, do trainings in person, I would say, you know, try to find one that's in LA. Maybe not for your initial training, like you can do wherever, but eventually, like as you progress and as you want to learn, LA is the mecca of it. I mean, it's where, you know, everyone knows that aesthetics and plastics is a big deal. Um, I would definitely feel like the East Coast is the higher need for it. Um, yeah, definitely the East Coast. It's just not as popular. New York is definitely popular with aesthetics. DC, popular. Atlanta is trying. It's like getting there. Um, but definitely the Southeast for sure is like, mm -mm. Um, but yeah. Um, we have a lot of questions kind of all similar. So there's questions about, can you do it as a BSN? Also, uh, and like, how would you recommend um, doing it as an NP? And then, um, sorry, I'm trying to find all these questions, guys. Um, and then is it easier to get into aesthetics as an MP compared to an RN? So kind yeah. of like all of those kinds of- So I'm gonna go backwards on that. It's definitely not, so, it's not necessarily easier, but if the state that you're in requires mid-levels, then yes, right? Like if it requires you to be a mid-level, then obviously you have to be a mid-level to inject or do whatever services. Um, however, you don't have to be an NP in most states to inject. I just knew that there are some states and which states those are, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but that would require, you know, to look at your scope of practice, look at your board of nursing and kind of see what the scope is. Um, ask me the first question about the RN, Brittany. Um, do, you recommend, uh, do you recommend working first in aesthetics or plastics as an RN before working in it as an MP? Um, no, I don't think it really honestly makes much of a difference working. You're going to still get the same basic training and you're going to grow the same. You're going to learn at the same rate. Uh, the only difference, I will tell you guys, the only reason I did go to school for my NP is in a lot of states as well as the state of California. Um, as for an RN to be able to inject, um, you have to technically have an order, right? So you have to have an order from a doctor to give any type of medication. Botox fillers, those are medications. They're a, a medically prescribed treatment, I guess you could say. Um, so as an RN, I have to take an order from someone. And in the state of California, the NP obviously can't prescribe. So, and the medical director, whoever else. I cannot see my own patients before an NP sees them and does what's called a good faith good faith exam in the state of California. So that NP or PA or doctor has to look at that patient, um, speak with them via telephone, via FaceTime, via in person, and go over their chart, look at their medical history, and say, yes, this patient is a safe candidate for these treatments, or no, they're not a safe candidate. As the RN, I cannot do that. And so basically, I went to school to ask five questions to patients. Uh, <laughs> That's all it's about it. It's like, um, so yeah, that is why I became an NP. It just gives me a little bit more autonomy. However, um, I know there's a lot of RNs that actually own their own practice and they have an overseeing medical director and um, that overseeing medical director will go over every patient's chart. And then from then on, as long as the patient doesn't actually have any change in their medical history, the RN can inject that patient and so forth. So I did that answer that question? Um, they You can just write back in if it didn't, guys. Um, but um, we'll do one more question and then we'll get back um, to the presentation because um, it kind of goes along with the lines of what you were just talking about, um, about the laws. Like, is there an easier way to navigate the laws or um, figure out the scope of practice for the aesthetic space as an RN? Um, you know, now, um, so there is a, there is a company, it's called AMSPA, A-M-S-P-A. I've actually gone to their conference. They have one of the biggest conferences for aesthetics. So everyone write this down. This is a tip that not many people know about. Um, and they actually break down, you have to become a member. It's like $400 or something like that. And they actually break down the rules and scope of practice for each state. 
and um, say what the RN can do, say what, you know, what type of medical director you need, things like that. So, like I said, obviously there's way too many states for me to know each state that an NP has the right, or like, for instance, I know in Georgia, RNs have to have a certification to do laser, but in LA or in California, you just need a training on a laser, and that's what I got. You know, I don't need a certification in order to do lasers. So, um, so yeah, I am spa is your resource on that one. All right, guys, I'll get back to them at the end, okay? A salary, please. <laughs> yes. Oh, look at that. I think somebody literally, Marion, you just put in salary, I think. How does the pay? Um, Okay, anyways, so salary is very wide range all over aesthetics. Um, it can go from, I will tell you guys, when I first started looking, um, I got hired at an office, very well-known office. It's actually a franchise in LA, and you guys are probably going to die, especially if you're a nurse in California. Um, they wanted to pay me $22 an hour, something like that, so like $22, $23 an hour. And they wanted me to work full time and they wanted me to sign a contract. And mind you, I would literally need like five roommates in order to survive on that type of <laughs> pay. So the salary can range from that low, mind you, most of the time when you have a very low salary like that in aesthetics, it's going to come with commission based and offices like that or franchises like that run on a super, super high commission. The office is on a, <laughs> Sarah, um, the office is on a, um, what is it called? Like a tier structure. So if you make, you know, 300,000 that month, the whole office is one, not you as a person, but if, in commissions, the office makes 300000 a month, then everybody gets some type of bonus on top of that. So, yes, the pay is super low, but then the way that the tier system and their commissions work very um, work to your advantage, but that makes you very, very, very salesy, right? That makes you a salesperson. I am not a salesperson. If you come in and you're like, I want my lips done, and I'm like, that's not what we need to do. We need to do this, this, and this before we touch your lips. That's what I'm going to tell you. Or if you come in and you say, I want this treatment done and I don't think that's the treatment for you, I will send you away. Or if you come in and, you know, you need surgery and I can't fix you as an injector, I'm going to send you to a surgeon. So I am very honest. I think that's one thing I stand very true with myself. Um, Tabitha, my mentor, she and I are very much like that. And so we work very well in that sense. It's, for us, not always money driven. And I think um, being an aesthetic nurse, it's about making somebody feel confident and not take, taking their money, in my opinion. Um, but if you are a salesperson, then, <laughs> then you might be making it good. However, my job, when I first started um, at, the old, at my old office, I worked on a commission base. I mean, sorry, not a commission. I worked on an hourly, so I had a set hourly, and my hourly was much, much, much higher more than double of that $20 an hour. Um, so, and mind you, I worked at a private office. I didn't work at a franchise that worked on commission and had a tier system. So I had an hourly and that hourly was much higher in comparison to other offices. Um, yes, you can work on a salary as well. Um, so at the new position I will be taking, hopefully very soon, um, I won't be on a salary. I will be working as an NP, but they have not a commission. They don't necessarily have a commission pay. This is really giving you guys a lot of information. Most people don't talk about pay, and this is very new to me, so I'm going to try to explain it kind of the best way that I can. Um, we, so I will make an hourly, and I will be, let's say I'm injecting, I'll always make that hourly. However, if I, if a patient buys $3,000 worth of product in that hour that I'm injecting, well, then I make a certain percentage off of that. Um, so it is kind of like commission based, but I could be making, you know, $120 every hour I'm injecting that day based off of how much that patient is buying or how much each hour a patient is buying. Um, so, you know, I can make a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money in that day based off of just what um, the patients are buying that day, or I can make my base, which is also pretty high, in my opinion, as a provider, um, 
and make that as well. So it can range in that um, in that hourly as you kind of grow or like uh, the structure is kind of change. So a lot of offices do it very differently, and I think it's just what you are comfortable with. Um, Right now, I don't know if I kind of explained this to you guys, I am independent. So I'm waiting on my NP license to process through California Board of Nursing. It takes like three months, it's insane. Um, so I'm waiting to inject as an NP, I guess you could say. However, I have my, I'm board certified everything. It's just California takes forever. So right now I inject independently and I work with a surgeon, she's a breast reconstructive surgeon. She has an all female office, and so that's really nice. She's very um, nice to let me keep my patients in this transition period, um, going from my old office to this new position that I will be in hopefully in a month or so. Um, I wanted to make sure that I retained all my patients because I work really, 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 really hard. Um, and if you hustle in a setting, you'll work really hard to get these patients, and they're literally like your babies. You want to hold on to them, you baby them, you give them everything you can. And you can't just stop injecting them. They need their Botox, guys. It's like a priority in their lives. They can't live without it, apparently. So <laughs> I needed to find a transition office. Um, and so this is that independent factor, which is really cool because this was new to me. This was me figuring out how to become an independent injector. So this is um, some good info. I reached out to a friend who works with a plastic surgeon. The surgeon is only in her office maybe two days a week during clinic days seeing her patients. So that left three other days in the week um, for me to be able to inject or use that space. So she does not technically um, she does not technically rent the space out to me. However, I will patients come in, they buy product, whatever I inject. And then she takes a certain percentage out and then I take a certain percentage out. And basically I pay a certain percentage of the product that my patient buys. So like the stock cost of the product so that she's not technically paying for that. And then whatever else is made on top of that, that the patients pay, which reminds you, this is aesthetic. So it's usually in the thousands of dollars, each patient or high hundreds to, you know, sometimes I can leave an appointment and a patient's paid like $6,000. Um, then we will split that based on the percentages that, you know, we agreed upon. So that's how I did it independently. And I really liked that because this is a transition period for me. I did not want it to be, um, I didn't want to become a hourly pay. I wouldn't make enough money in my opinion for like only being there a few days a week as this isn't somewhere I'm full time. And I also did not want to rent space because I didn't want to outwardly pay her. And she buys a lot of the product anyway through her office. So it only made sense for us to kind of do it the way that we made it work. And um, that was how I figured it out. This is the way I did it. I'm sure there's other ways independent injectors do it, but it works really well for me. So I hope that's enough on salary and pay. <laughs> All right, next slide. <laughs> So typical work day, um, usually you come in, there's obviously like your, your front office, so they'll do your schedule. Um, me now, I really, really, really try hard not to schedule your patients and as you grow, as you become more involved in your aesthetics, you'll realize that it's very hard to schedule your own patients when you have like a high volume practice um, because your patients wanna text you, they have your number, they are like, can you just put me on the schedule? And you're like, no, you have to message the office. So the office will actually give you your schedule. I usually go through it. It's just like a lot of regular nursing stuff at this point. Um, you, I go through my schedule. I look back at my old charts and I see, let's say they had 30 units this time. They come in, I take their pictures. Um, however, before they come in, I always write what I did previously on my schedule so I know kind of exactly what we did last time, what I wanted to do, and that's usually in my charting from my previous, um, from their previous appointment. Um, product inventory, usually days in advance because if you have a patient come in and they want cheeks and you don't have the right filler for cheeks, they're gonna be pissed. So always product inventory, um, maybe not at the end of the day, but usually at the end of every week, I will make sure that we do product inventory. Um, assessing and consults, that's like the main part of what you do in aesthetics. 
Um, so that's obviously just assessing the patient, telling them what's best for them, listening to their concerns, you telling them what's what you think is best. I will say the one thing in aesthetic nursing that made me the most uncomfortable, which probably would make anyone uncomfortable, is pointing out people's flaws. You don't realize that you have to do that. You have to be like, oh, you're a little crooked there. We should probably balance that out and fix that. Or do you know you have this bump or you have this really bad wrinkle here? We should fix that. Um, pointing out people's flaws is very uncomfortable in the beginning, but once you get used to it and once you point out a flaw because you have a solution or you point out a flaw because you have a plan to fix it or over time, then it becomes a little bit more comfortable. But um, I will say that was the most uncomfortable thing for me. You know, I would take pictures for assessing because that's your number one thing. You always, you always, always, always as an aesthetic nurse, you take your before and after pictures because if a patient reaches out to you like, hey, this is not there before and you look back at your picture and you're like, it 90% of the time was there before. They just didn't see it because now you've made changes and now they see other things. It's weird. Um, so yeah, assessing is a really huge part in it. Um, treating, obviously the treatment part, treatments in a day, an appointment. Usually I, I do like to assess and treat on the same day. Some places will make you do a consult um, on one day, treat on another day. And patients like that option. Um, I believe in free consults because somebody might come to me and, you know, not want what I'm thinking or what they're thinking, or maybe they need to be a surgery patient or, you know, so I believe in free consults. Um, a lot of high end surgeons or offices will make you pay for the consult, whatever. I think it just depends on where you work. Um, and then, like I said, I like to do a consult and then treat and, um, Together because I feel like it's a more cohesive appointment rather than splitting it up unless the patient just can't afford it and we've got to like make a plan um, charting 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 so this is weird um, <clears throat> charting is really really big in aesthetics because this is people's money and people if they spend a lot of money then they want and they don't like what they get then they're going to complain there's no question about it they're gonna complain if they're spending thousands of dollars and they don't like something. So charting and aesthetics is massive. And um, my mentor, Tabitha, she gives me a lot of insight because now she oversees multiple aesthetic offices. She kind of audits some of their charts and she's realizing that a lot of nurses are not charting. And one that's putting your license in jeopardy. And even though it does seem like a very lax um, field and specialty, it's still, obviously very important to protect your license and make sure you're charting make sure you chart how you clean the patient you aspirate it that you weren't in a vessel just like the very basic things that you'll learn as an aesthetic nurse um still very much apply like regular nursing um and then always follow-ups if needed depending on the patient or depending on if i don't think we can get everything treated how i would like it or the patient would like it in one day um, i always set up follow-ups i also 90% of the time will give my patient, There's, it's like a rare occasion, I probably just forget to give my patient my phone number, but always an email, always a phone number, anything that they can reach out to me if there's anything that goes wrong. Um, or if they just have a question because like I said, they spent money and it's a service. So, okay, next one. Um, so things to come, uh, like I said previously, I, um, Tabitha and I and the surgeon and the company I'll be working with, uh, we will be working on virtual trainings, hands-on trainings. Um, I'm super excited about this, guys. Like, obviously, if you can't tell, just like educating and just like getting aesthetics out there, I really wish that there were more honest businesses around this industry. It's very hush-hush. Nobody wants to tell, because <laughs> I put things to come shh, right? Nobody wants to tell their secrets. Um, and I'm just really big into if this is something you want to do. There's obviously like hairstylists, makeup artists, like there's millions of them and they still grow with clientele. So I definitely believe that there's more than enough room for aesthetic nurses in any aspect you want to grow. And I don't feel like keeping my secrets is going to hinder me from 
<laughs> getting patients or anything. So I'm just big on wanting to train um, and just educate and give anyone a resource that I wish that I had um, when I started. I had absolutely nothing. So literally everything that I just went over is everything that I have learned by myself over the years. Nobody taught me these things except Tabitha. Um, these are just all things I've kind of like compiled over the years and felt like if I had these things, then I would have been so much more prepared to find a job. It would have been so much easier. Um, and I just want to give that out to you guys. Um, how can we find out when your trainings will start? I will start posting. If you guys follow me on Instagram, um, when our trainings will start, it will be, it will actually be like um, a program, like a training program. So it's not just going to be like a small little thing that we're doing. It will be like an actual program. Some will do virtual, some will be modules. We'll probably um, sell some things, uh, not sell, but like sell classes, but that will all be based in Beverly Hills. Um, I also as well offer virtual seminars and I give a lot of like handouts. Um, I give like examples of my resume, just like things you can take and use for those interviews. So I only do them a few times a year because um, I'm really busy. I would love to do them more, but I think it's definitely worth it. A lot of people that attended my last one message me and say, I got my job. Thank you so much for all the information you gave me. Um, so that makes me feel good that I'm like, yes, it's the best industry ever. Like aesthetics is amazing. So anyone else I can like you know, transition if you don't want to do bedside anymore or, if, you know, you just realize it's not for you and transition out and find a different specialty, then, you know, that's what I want to help anyone do. You definitely got a lot of, uh, of people in here saying that they were willing to fly across the country. For you. <laughs> that's a, that is a, that is a esteemed uh, thing there. So we'll take that, right? <laughs> um, my my Instagram, I think Mary just posted it, at aesthetic.nurse.ri. Sorry, I guess I should put that on the slides, huh? <laughs> It's all good. Um, there's a there's a couple more questions, and if you guys have any more that we didn't get to or didn't answer, just jot them back down in the Q and A, and I'm getting them to them now. Um, I like this one. I noticed a lot of women in this nursing aesthetics. Would it be more difficult as a male to get in this field? You know what? No, I've actually been coming across. So no one because think of how many male plastic surgeons there are who also do aesthetics. Like, no, I just think it's more of a male or a female dominated industry because it's more beauty. It's more like makeup side. But there are, um, there's actually a really good injector in Miami. His name is Get Fresh, I think, or at Get Fresh. I follow him. I just don't remember his full, but it's like at Get Fresh. And he does a lot of trainings in Miami as well. Um, but he's a very big injector. He actually is really big on noses, injecting noses. I don't do noses. Um, that's just a safety issue for me. Uh, but he's a great injector and he's a male and he's, yeah. So no, I don't, you know, I just think it's female dominated because of what it is. Oh, I love this one too. Um, do you find it hard for people of color to get into this? Oh, I knew this one was coming. I always get it. Um, okay, so let me just tell you like my quick little background story. When I first started applying, now I wear braids all the time. Prior to this, I never wore braids, and I had just got them for the summer. I had gone home, and I'm like, I'm going to apply for these shops. I had had braids. I felt very, I guess the word you could say, I felt very ethnic. I think that sounds so stupid, but I did because I, I didn't wear braids. It just, like, wasn't my thing. And um, I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I'm about to walk into these interviews. These people are going like, to look at me crazy and be like, no. I had the exact same thought, the exact same feeling, and the same apprehension. It made no difference, in my opinion. Um, like I said, all the things, the little tips I gave you on selling your personality, walking in like you have confidence, walking in with a little bit of that background knowledge, no. Like, it was like that, what I was, the one, that was probably one of the one things I was very nervous about was my appearance in that moment. Did not matter. Like I said, I was offered pretty much every job. So I feel like if you turn on, I mean, as we all know, like color should not matter. And that's another reason why I'm really big on aesthetics is because there are not that many women of color in it. And I want to show you, like, there's no reason there shouldn't be. There really just is no reason um, because you can succeed and do 
the exact same. Um, but yeah, I I had the same apprehension and, it, and look where we are, so. <laughs> you can do it, baby girl, yeah. or men, <laughs> whoever. <laughs> exactly. Um, can you go over what we should be charting in more detail? Um, okay, so yes and no, because this would be based on your office and your protocols and your guidelines and your rules, law, laws, regulations, so on. Um, when I worked at my office, my previous office, Tabitha and I came up with these there's a charting system It's called aesthetic record. Um, it's like amazing for aesthetics. And we had what's called dot phrases. And it pretty much was like, you know, you guys know when you're like looking at doctor's charts and it's like, it says all the same crap, but like they change a few things and it's because it's like a pre-populated note. So we had those based on like Botox, fillers, cool sculpting, microneedling. We had all these thought phrases that included all of the things that we naturally do when we provide our services, like prepping the skin, um, making sure if they had laser that they weren't on antibiotics, like all these things were included. But naturally, as you continue to do it so many times, you just naturally do the things that are in the thought phrases, like how to prep your patient, make sure to ask certain questions and so on. And then I always, with my charting, there's always pictures. And then in addition to that, um, I will put what type of filler I use, the lot number, the expiration date, um, you know, what the patient's concerns were, was, what technique I use, that sort of thing. So honestly, my charting necessarily, excuse me, is not, um, I'm not charting a lot because most of it is already pre-populated, but I do chart very specifics for each patient because I want to know their goals, what I think is important for them and so on. And the pre-populated stuff should be, that's the legality stuff, the stuff you don't have to think about, but you naturally do anyways, because that's part of your routine when you're treating your patients, if that makes sense. And also, that's just like she said before, you should just make sure that it's what your facility and things need. Yeah. <laughs> we can give all the advice we want to give, but yeah. it also depends. Yeah. Um, all right. We'll answer a couple more because we're almost at yeah. time. But um, any insights or tips for a handful of RNs and NPs wanting to open an independent med spa? Uh, one more time because I think I was reading another question that looks... Oh. Do you want to answer that one? <laughs> um, any advice for um, people wanting to open up a med spa? Um, my biggest advice would be don't before you get experience. Nine, it's a very, I think it's like 88 to 90% of med spas fail. Um, one, guys, it's, it's a hustle. It's very hard. It's very hard to get your patients. It's very hard. The products you buy are very expensive, which is also why it's a very high sales um, industry. However, you need that experience, you need that backing, you need that the, the lawyers, you need to make sure that everything is in place um, because of all the money that you do put into these offices. To be totally honest, my goal is to eventually open an office on my own back in Atlanta. Just telling everyone this so everybody knows now. However, the company who I've chosen to partner with, they're investors. So the goal is to eventually co-own. Um, this is the goal to eventually co-own. However, because I have that trust and that, um, you know, the years of experience with them, they'll back me. I'll have that medical director who you know. Um, you know, you just want to make, you'll have your investor who is your business person. They have all the, the lawyers and the legalities of everything that you need for your med spa to run properly. Um, so I think it's best to have the experience. I think it's best to have people that have been doing aesthetics to be there to help you if you want to start your own office, but it takes years of experience. Like people that ask like about social media, you have to grow before you go open your own office because it's your, it's people's face and it's their bodies. And you don't want to just open an office and give subpar service. You need to be very experienced in what you're doing so that you make a great reputation for yourself and that your patients are happy and safe as well. All right. Okay, but hold on. Sorry. Somebody asked me, please don't forget to acquisition of products if we want to start our own business. It's so secretive. Um, 
you would need a medical director to buy products. So if you want to start your own business, you as an RN or whatever um, can technically do whatever you want, but you still need a medical per, or a medical director, whatever that state provides. Like I think Utah, you can be an NP and be your own medical director. Uh, California, you cannot. So whatever your uh, state allows, you can buy product and you can inject, but you need to make sure that you're taking the right steps in order to be able to do it uh, legally. Also, sorry, let me just say this. When owning a practice in a lot of states, um, like in Utah, for instance, if you're an NP or higher, you can be your own medical director in California. Um, you have to you have to have your medical director who's a DO or ND has to own 51% of that office. Um, maybe not monetary wise, you don't have to have it split 51 50, or 49, but on paper they have to own more of that office, like in California, and I know some other states are like that as well. So it gets a little iffy. All right, so we'll just do this one last um, question. Outside of Botox and fillers, what are other um, services do you provide on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, right now, as independent, I'm only providing <laughs> Botox and fillers because it's easy. They're like this big and I can transport them. Um, however, I do microneedling, I do lasers, I do uh, PRP, I do, uh, what else? There's so many. Radio frequency, microneedling with radio frequency, laser hair removal, tattoo removal. I'm literally trained in everything and mind you, I got trained by one person. So it's just kind of finding that person to like train you and what you want to know or what um, machines that they have. And then you just fly your little self on from there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thank you guys so much for coming again. Um, and we host uh, events like this all the time. So please stay tuned to Trusted Health. Um, we are a travel nurse company, but we also have blogs and a ton of career resources. So if you guys have any other questions, you guys can email me. There's a little button for that, as well as do not forget to fill out the, fil the feedback survey, OK? Um, we're hoping to have some more just like this for you guys. And I just appreciate you all coming. And Ari, for hosting us. Okay. I hope you guys were able to get something out of it. I know I, I had to talk fast, guys. I want to get the information out. Um, but follow me. I will be hosting more events um, that you guys can get some more resources from. I would love to meet you. I will see everyone's faces and we talk kind of do the same thing. Um, but yeah, I'm so happy. I really hope I helped. I really hope somebody gets a job. If so, message me and let me know if you were able to get one um, just based off of any tips or advice. So. All right. Well, you guys have a great night and I hope you guys have a um, wonderful rest of your weekend and week. Okay. Thanks.